Well, thank you all for joining us this evening. I hope you've stored up your excitement for today's Securing Your Farm's Energy with Solar Batteries discussion. Oops, the next slide. There we go. Okay, I'm actually gonna unshare the slides for a second here so that we can just chat face to face. So my name is Nicole Cooper. Um, I'm your host today and I've been with Straight Up Solar. Uh, I'm a marketing manager here and I've been with Straight Up Solar for roughly a year. I'm actually just celebrating a year this month. So I'm very excited. Um, with me today is Brent Ritzel. Uh, Brent, did you want to introduce yourself? Oh, sure. Yeah, my name is uh, Brent Ritzel. I'm a senior project developer with Straight Up Solar who I've been with now for five and a half years. And I'm, I'm located down here in, in Southern Illinois in Carbondale. Thank you. Uh, Adam, did you wanna, do you wanna say a few words? Sure, hi, I'm Adam Keena. I'm a field project coordinator with Straight Up Solar. Um, I've been with the company around five years and I also live in Southern Illinois uh, with Brent down here, so. <laughs> nice. Uh, so Kyle is actually driving. Kyle, are you able to say hello really quick? Yep. Hey everybody, Kyle Hawkinson here. I am the one of the service technicians in our St. Louis office. Uh, monitoring and production engineering is what I do for the company. I've been with SUS for about a year also. So Nicole and I share that uh, spring of 2019, right before COVID hit anniversary. Um, and pleased that you all are here. Uh, you actually do have uh, one person that's from the ag world being myself. So uh, definitely hit us with your questions specific to that. Uh, again, like Nicole said, I'm driving. So I'll try to give as best support for those questions as I can while I'm driving. Appreciate everybody's attendance tonight. <laughs> but safely. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and reshare my screen here. And these are those faces one more time. <laughs> oh, I went too far. <laughs> Let me go back. No, that was it. Yeah, there's Adam and Kyle. So I wanted to go ahead and start by sharing Straight Up Solar's broad vision. We care about people and we care about our planet. And to do this, we focus on clean energy and building sustainability, not only in the economy, but also for the environment. Uh, our goal is to build a healthy shared future for us all. And we've built our, our business on these core values. And speaking of values, we practice something called clear values, which means we put community first. We try to lead the solar tribe by educating advocating solar policy, respecting each other in the environment, and striving for excellence in all that we do. And now that you know a little bit more about where we're coming from, here's a little more about our company. Uh, Straight Up Solar is Illinois and Missouri's most experienced turnkey solar energy design and installation firm with over 1,700 installations since 2006. We were founded by our president, Dr. Dane Glick. At the time he was doing uh, his medical, medical residency in Kentucky, he actually witnessed the devastation of mountaintop removal for coal mining, and he decided to look for an alternate energy source for his home. And he really didn't have any luck finding a solar company to install a solar array. So he educated himself and he got certified through NABCEP, which is, um, it's like a clean energy professional certification. And he installed solar on his own home. And then from there, like friends and family all raised their hands and wanted to go solar as well. So Straight Up Solar blossomed into a business rooted in caring for others by creating a path for clean energy and a sustainable economy. We now have over 75 people working with us today. And as a team, we're excited to help people like farmers uh, to reduce electricity costs, gain energy independence and secure a powerful return on their inv investment with solar. Um, we're also a member of the Amicus Solar Cooperative uh, this is a large organization of solar companies who've come together to share trade knowledge and a shared passion for sustainability. We're also a certified B Corp, which means we put people and planet above profit. Uh, we're also proud members of uh, Missouri and Illinois Energy Associations, MOSIA and ICEA. And in addition, we are a certified Tesla Powerwall installer and happy to announce our line of Generac power cell and end phase and charge battery options, which you'll be hearing about those today. And we've got quite a few topics to cover um, from the benefits of a battery, including more about backing up your farm or home during a power outage. Brent will also be zeroing in on battery options that we offer, how do batteries work, what an install installation looks like, financials and incentives, 
and how to get started. And if you have specific topics about getting solar and batteries uh, into your farm operation, please share them in the chat now and we'll make sure that we hit these topics. All right, Brent, are you ready to take charge of the presentation from here? Uh, you betcha, a absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Nicole. Um, and yeah, uh, farmers are technology innovators. And uh, though I'm not in the ag industry directly myself, I do come from generations of, of German farmers. And, and so I, uh, who farmed the, the Mississippi uh, uh, Plateau or, or actually River Valley, I guess. Um, but um, I, I, you know, I work with a number of farmers uh, in terms of going solar. And one thing that I've definitely learned um, are that farmers are technology innovators. Um, Farmers are early adopters of new technologies, and, and along with this, farmers are obviously natural entrepreneurs. Um, farmers have to be comprehensivists. They have to be masters of many different trades, be it mechanic, engineer, land management, accounting, um, any kind of troubleshooting uh, that's necessary. It's something that they have to engage in. Um, and always, farmers operate in a tight cash flow, uh, obviously in an industry where there's very large uh, dramatic risks from years to years. Um, and then also uh, farmers are thinking ahead to future generations. Uh, that's part of, of, of what they do um, in, in terms of providing food um, and sustenance uh, uh, for us um, on from there. Now, the question is, is a battery right for your farm? Um, now, if, if some of the things that you're wanting um, are to self-consume more of your own solar energy or to take control of your power in case of catastrophic grid failure. Also, if you're wanting a redundant backup in case of the generator fails to start or to put your utilities net, net metering policy on your side. I mean, in some cases we have a number of utilities that have kind of more challenging uh, policies in, in regards to going solar then a battery might be the right choice for your farm. And also something to consider if you don't want a noisy generator backup or to have to store diesel or gasoline or the infrastructure costs for propane or natural gas, then also a battery might be the right choice for your farm. Let's see, what are the benefits of pairing battery and solar? Um, and I do believe we have a poll question at this point, correct? Um, okay, very good. Um, the, the question is, uh, do you have solar? And go ahead and take a few seconds to go ahead and, and uh, vote, let's see. Awesome, thank you all so much. We're, we're, up, to, we're up to about 20 responses and it looks like 55% of the 20 respondents already have solar. 25% uh, are considering solar now and 20% are just learning about solar. So a, a bit over half uh, have solar and another quarter are definitely uh, looking into it, interested. Fantastic. Um, oh. Do you, do you stop to share the results or is that something I do? I just shared them. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna it's, leave it up for a second so they could see it. So I'm okay, gonna go ahead and stop sharing those for now. Okay, very good. Move on to the next slide. <laughs> these are not new technologies, we're very familiar with these. Okay. <laughs> now on to some of the solar batteries uh, benefits. Um, working with a new computer here with a little bit of a fussy finger mouse, my apologies. Um, batteries must always pair with solar or be paired with a solar system in order to qualify for the, the federal income tax credit, um, which is at 26% of the project cost, both in 2021 and the upcoming 2022. Now, some of the, some of the benefits of a battery are, are when, uh, when the grid is down, uh, you will actually need a battery to access your solar. Now, now this is something that uh, can come to surprises to a lot of folks who want to go solar, but um, basically every inverter is, is designed that when the grid goes down to disconnect your, your solar from the grid. 
And the only way to maintain that connection would be with a battery backup system. So that's something that's important to keep in mind. I know that a lot of folks that go solar, the time that they want it most is when the grid is down. But unfortunately, due to safety precautions, uh, uh, all inverters are disconnected from the grid, which has given solar an incredible track record of not electrocuting line people um, uh, when uh, grids are turned back on uh, because the solar uh, does not backfeed onto the line because of that feature. Um, another battery benefit is that you're able to use your solar energy when the sun goes down, that you're able to take the extra energy, surplus energy during the day and um, save that in your battery and then use that from your battery at night. Um, also it provides backup protection when your power goes out. Like we mentioned, either temporary or long-term uh, grid failure, batteries uh, will provide you uh, an incredible backup um, in those situations and will be able to recharge every day uh, when and if the, the sun is shining during those days. And also um, when it comes to utilities that have a bit more of a challenging solar policies, it can actually help you save more money and recapture some of your savings. Some of the utilities that would be impacted are like Southwestern Electric Cooperative, um, MJM, um, also a number of those down in Southern Illinois, like Southeastern Illinois Electric Cooperative and Southern Illinois Electric Cooperative. So there's actually an economic advantage to using batteries in those cases. And also a fifth battery uh, uh, benefit is that they're virtually maintenance free which uh, puts them in a very different category than the fossil fuel based uh, generator backups. Okay, um, now in terms of providing backup during an outage, uh, during a grid outage, batteries allow solar inverter to operate when, when the sun is shining and also provides electricity after the sun goes down. Um, the battery backup provides seamless transition and there's no needs to re reset clocks. So that's, that's one of the advantages of it. Uh, also, a mobile app provides management of, of power consumption. Uh, so the, the management control systems for these batteries are, are pretty easy to work with and, and really uh, kind of uh, allow you a lot of control over exactly what these battery systems are, are doing as integrated with, with your solar and your entire electrical system. Now, uh, the types of batteries that we offer here at Straight Up Solar are, are the Generac Power Cell battery. Um, this is a, a new affordable option for solar powered home a, a battery backup system. Um, uh, the Tesla Powerwall, um, th that's the one that a lot of people are more familiar with. It's got a proven track record. Um, it's got outstanding technology and support. And then the in-phase in-charge. Um, this is the newest model we're working with, and these are for the in-phase microinverters. And these show great resiliency with redundancies in case if one part fails. And, and then that's a quality I think that in-phase tends to bring across the board and it's no different with, with their battery systems. So we're gonna dig in a little bit deeper into each of these battery systems and explore them a little, little bit more detailed. Now, um, the Generac uh, uh, power cell, um, Basically, in one cabinet, you, you have a number of options. You can put up the six individual three kilowatt hour batteries um, in, in that. Um, and, and so there's, there's a lot of flexibility and scalability as, as far as the Generac battery goes. And, and, and generally, you, you, you can have three to six of those batteries in one of those cabinets. So the energy capacity would be between nine and 18 kilowatt hours in one of those individual cabinets. Now, um, for now, the Generac Powerwall is only powered by, by its, own, its own inverter. Um, that's the only thing that's compatible with that. And you can actually run two of these battery cabinets off of one single uh, 7.6 kilowatt Generac inverter. Um, that now, uh, Generac power cells can be floor or wall mounted, and they can be indoor or outdoor. They had actually have different cabinets uh, for both indoor and outdoor usage. And I believe, um, in terms of here in the Midwest, uh, the Generac is really the only viable one that, that can be utilized outdoors just because of the low temperatures that we do reach uh, during the winter time. Uh, uh, Generac power cells have equipment warranty of 10 years. Um, as I mentioned, you can comp combine up to six battery cells within one single cabinet, 
to, uh, to meet your energy needs. And, and, and the costs uh, for that uh, power cell are for that uh, three to six batteries is usually in the range between about $13,000 and $22,000, uh, all inclusive install. Um, and and um, generally speaking, a Generac power cell requires the least amount of space for high capacity. Um, as I mentioned, also, it has to be installed with a Generac converter, but they're working very hard on, on making it compatible with multiple inverters. That's kind of the mistake that Tesla Powerwall made with their first model, that it was only compatible with one inverter. And so with their second model, it, it was universally compatible. And Generac is working in the same way on a model like that. Uh, so that folks that already have gone solar with maybe an SMA inverter or solar edge inverter will hopefully in the coming months be able to add on Generac batteries. We're really looking forward to that day. And so from there, we'll go on to the Tesla power walls. Now, a single a Tesla power wall battery has the, uh, has 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage, up, up to five kilowatts of continuous backup power. Um, and, and so basically that means that if you're drawing at the, at the highest level, that battery is gonna last you a little bit under three hours. Um, and um, the Tesla Powerwall can be floor or wall mounted, indoor only in the Midwest, as I mentioned. Uh, and you can actually combine up to 10 Powerwalls together to cover your, your battery storage need. And you can fit up to three, I believe, face to face. And so they, uh, they don't have to all be individual flat against the wall, that you can stack them three, three in a group, which is really handy in terms of helping the having options in terms of saving space. Um, it, it's a universal inverter. Um, it can be used, it's a, a universal battery. It can be utilized with any inverter. Um, it has an equipment warranty of 10 years. Um, and and, and the, the cost for one to three batteries would fall in the range of about 18,000 to about $38,000 installed. Um, with all these battery systems, um, there's a lot of startup in just the cost just to get it installed. And we find that there's incredible economy of scale as you add more batteries on top. Um, from there, we'll, we'll take a look at the, at the in-phase. Okay. Let's see the in-phase in charge. And, and this is brand new to us, but we're, we've already started getting some of these out there. Um, now, generally, the, these will have a, a battery capacity of 10 kilowatt hours to about 30 kilowatt hours, but much like um, much like the Generac, uh, they, they do come in, in more subtle increments of, of about 3.3 kilowatt hours each. Um, now, these also can be floor or wall mounted. Um, uh, it says in, indoor or outdoor. Um, I'm I actually I, I I'm I'm these probably do have. Um, outdoor capacity, given that the micro inverters are always installed outdoors under, underneath the panels. So that's something maybe maybe one of our one of our techs could help clarify in, in, in that regard. Um, these also have the equipment warranty of 10 years, which seems to be pretty standard for these battery systems. And, and you can combine up to four of these 10 kilowatt uh, batteries to cover your energy needs. And, and, and so um, the, ten, the 10 kilowatt hour system would probably fall in about $20,000, the 30 kilowatt hour system running around $40,000 or so. Um, and, and these are these are literally physically the smallest batteries uh, for their capacity compared to the others. Um, and, and, and also they have the lowest uh, cost um, related to that. And also they're the most resilient um, there's a lot of redundancies in case if any single parts fail, that they actually use the same microinverter approach uh, to the inverters. They use that with, within the in-phase uh, battery itself. Hey, Nicole or Brent, do you mind if I, I oh, want to answer do. a question quick to address? Can you go back uh, four slides, Nicole, to that main overview of the three different battery systems? We're there. Go yeah, ahead. Here. I just want to address a question I saw in the chat and just to help uh, for everybody's awareness. We can do any of these battery cabinets in an outdoor installation. The reason for the recommendation we give for indoor installations uh, in battery installations is there are heating systems and cooling systems in each one of these battery options. 
but that does cost you to maintain um, the temperature, right? You have to maintain a heating system in that battery and that's costing you kilowatt hours of battery capacity. So to get more life out of your battery or, or basically more runtime on a daily basis or in a backup capacity, we usually recommend to install them inside, but again, uh, we can work with you and your individual installation to see what works best for you. Just reach out to us if you want to go that route. <laughs> awesome. Th thank you for that clarification. Um, awesome. Were we good on this slide? Yeah. Now okay. we're on to um, how does the battery work with solar? And first, uh, this this is uh, we're going to talk about how a battery um, adds value. Um, if you're in one of those utilities that that kind of give you a lower wholesale rate for any of the kilowatt hours that you push to the grid. Um, for example, the, the first graph is showing a, a typical day uh, of usage, um, and that's kind of the gray and, and darker blue graph versus uh, the bell graph, which is the solar production. And, and basically what, what, what that's indicating is that that light blue portion um, would be sent to the grid and, and you would you would be either given uh, retail credit if it's in certain certain utilities or wholesale credit in some of these rural cooperatives uh, for that. Now, if you have a battery system, instead of pushing that to the grid, you can capture that with, with the battery system. In, in, in this example, it's the power wall. Uh, you, can, you can fill the battery up and, and then when the sun goes down and you would normally start drawing back from the grid, that's when you would use the, that surplus energy that's been saved up into your battery and have that get you through the evening and maybe part of the night, just depending on how much surplus there was uh, during that day. So this is a good kind of graphic portrayal of what we're talking about in, in terms of how a battery can add extra economic value. Now, you're completely free to do this every day if you're, if you're like on an Ameren, Illinois, but Ameren, Illinois, for example, is already a 100% efficient battery that if you send them a kilowatt hour during the day, they owe you one back at night. And, and so they're actually even a little bit more efficient than these batteries, which all are around, I believe, about 97% efficiency. So that, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, this is just speaking to the economic advantage. And when I do talk about batteries to folks, it's not just the economics of it. It's also, uh, it's an insurance policy. Um, uh, on a few different levels. We'll, we'll dig into that a little bit more. Um, next slide, please. Um, and, 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 this, and this is the insurance policy that it provides. It provides you with, with backup generation, uh, sh should the grid go down, uh, reserves 100% of your battery energy to provide seamless power to, to your farm in the event of an outage. Um, uh, some customers don't realize they're missing out on some self-generation opportunities when the weather is sunny and calm. Um, so so this, is, this is part of the kind of the, the insurance policy reality of what batteries add. Also, um, um, it stores solar energy not used during the day to power your, your farm at night. Um, I, I, and, 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 this, and, and for net metering customers, it might, might not make a difference, like those folks on Ameren, Illinois. But when you're being paid a wholesale rate for net metering, this option makes more sense. It, it uh, increases solar energy that powers your farm, and it's the best way to become more energy independent. And, and like I said, this is the one that introduces uh, um, the economic dimension. Uh, as a backup generation, it's more serves as, as an insurance policy uh, should there be a, a grid outage. And on from there. We actually do have a poll for this one. Oh. Okay, my apologies. Uh, <laughs> oh, no worries. I'm going to go ahead and launch it awesome. here. Can you see it okay? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I guess given uh, what, what we've discussed so far, which battery mode are you most interested in? And to help Either folks along with the poll here, I'll, I'll help run out here. Uh, what we're asking for on the poll, there's two options here, backup generation versus self-powered like Brent said there are certain co-ops certain utility uh, landscapes in power but as you can see there on the screen I'm talking about your solar generation uh, the excess of solar on, on your on your farming operation to store on the battery um, and use it at night or if you just want to do backup generation only or 
we're not going to use that excess power that you store overnight until there is no grid uh, connected. So that's a little bit of clarification there for anybody that's curious. Awesome. <laughs> I think we followed that. <laughs> Kyle, just yeah. so you know, you've got a little, uh, it's a little delayed and then it's like a little fast. Cylon, a little Cylon in you, Kyle. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. All right, wanna, publish, the, I'm going to go ahead and end the, the results. Here. Okay. Yeah. And let's publish those. Go ahead. So yeah, for, for just people looking for backup power, uh, 14% uh, uh, people looking this the self power to offset electrical costs, 9% and 50% for both. And a quarter, not sure yet. Cool. Okay, then on from there, uh, what does an install look like? And Adam, uh, did you want to walk people through these? What? Yeah, I can do that. So, you know, on the, the left here, you can see um, what what is... Um, considered a whole home backup. So you, you have a gateway, which is an automatic transfer switch um, that's gonna be installed between the main electrical panel of your, your home and uh, the meter. And when the power goes out, that, that automatic transfer switch will switch over and allow um, solar and the batteries to, to power the home. And then the one on the, the right here is an essential loads panel. So um, instead of you know, backing up the whole home, um, what, what we can do is move loads into an essential loads panel. And when the power goes out, the automatic transfer switch or the, the gateway, um, as Tesla calls it, calls it, will then you know switch it to only power that essential loads panel with with solar and um, the battery. So you know this is a a good scenario where if if you don't have a lot of battery backup and you want to make sure a few loads are are still running when your power power goes out, you can move those loads over and get those backed up when when the power's down. Awesome. Oh, hey, look at that. Yeah. And then this, <laughs> go ahead, Brent, I'll let you take it back over. Oh, no, 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 this is this is clearly your slide. Oh, oh Adam, you're on, you're on mute. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is one of our um, first power wall installations that we had done. And, and this is um, a, an essential loads panel here. So you can see the, the panel that we're pointing to, that's that's what we call the, the essential loads. So um, that's kind of the clean clean look. And we always let the customer pull the, the wrapping off the power wall. So uh, that's why it's not, the wrapper is still on there. He hadn't pulled off his, pre his uh, wrapping paper to his present yet. So. Um, just uh, an example of, of what we're looking for, you know, in the installation with all the, the wiring and equipment hung on the wall. Hey, Nicole, do you mind going back one slide? I wanted to clarify something real quick uh, for our audience, if you don't mind. Yeah, here you go. We're on that slide now. Okay. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, so I just wanted to specify here for everybody, probably one of the biggest questions anybody has in their head right now, or at least I would, um, in, a, in a farming operation, um, you have a lot of loads, especially if you're, you know, a grain-based operation, especially with grain dryers on your farm. Um, I would probably say at this stage, um, you would want to come talk to us to see what your load profile looks like on your farm to see what we can back up or do load offsetting of, of loads overnight on the grid. Um, you can buy, obviously, as many batteries as you want, but that may not be cost justified in your operation. Uh, you know, that's very case specific. So like I said, Come talk to us. We can get you an installation that works well, both financially and physically as an installation that backs up what you need on the farm for either essential operations for livestock, uh, maintaining lighting for buildings and workspaces. Or if you live on your farm, we can back up your whole house, part of your house, fridges, uh, freezers, you know, keeping the meat stored well, you know, anything like that. But this is that breakdown where uh, if we're just backing up the house on the farm, you know, we do the left side view here or if you want to do essential loads only essential loads could be your shop only it could be a house and a shop it could just be part of the shop part of the house whatever you want to do it's very case specific so i just wanted to point that out for everybody also i i think along those lines an important thing to keep in mind is that batteries are on a panel electrical panel by panel basis uh whereas solar is on a meter by meter basis um battery backups are particular to whatever panel that they're connected with correct 
Adam can jump in on that. Um, Brent, from my understanding, you can do, you know, I'll, I'll call a farm shop, for example, that's a panel, right? A house or, you know, a home farm uh, on the site or on, you know, on your farming operation would be a panel too. That is correct. Uh, but there's some electrical configurations where you might have, you know, a main transformer coming from a line pole feed from your utility on your farm. And we can do an interconnection at that point too. We would just need some BOS, um, which is our integration equipment to get that connected. So it, it depends on your, on your site and your farming operations, uh, electrical situation. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's all, all site specific. As Kyle gotcha. said, they, we can put different, uh, we have batteries back up multiple panels, um, or, you know, um, one set of batteries back up one panel and another set back up another panel. So there are a lot of different options in that. Um, it's just going to be, it's very specific to your site. I guess you can interconnect it more up river um, per se, and, and, that, and that's a way to, 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 to kind of back up multiple pa electrical panels. Okay. Th thank you. Thank you Absolutely. for that. that. That's good to know. Um. <laughs> All right. Back to here or next slide? Next slide, I guess. All right. And, and, ba and basically kind of both Adam and, and Kyle have been reiterating that, that every home is unique, that we customize the battery solution to the unique needs of your home. And, and, and things get even more specific than it does with solar because we're, we're looking at particular loads and, and exactly what you're wanting, wanting to back up. Um, and, and these, a lot, for a lot of farms, um, you know, there's a lot of wells that are, that are electric powered and, and that if you lose electrical, you, you lose your well. And, and all, some pumps are also a, a really big uh, a feature that folks will, will want to back up for, you know, just a lower overall risk. And, and so, but the bottom line is that we, we cater to exactly what your needs are with each of these different battery systems. And then this is a, this is a layout with uh, three Tesla power walls. And, and those are uh, uh, three different, it uh, looks like SMA inverters um, uh, that are being interconnected with those. Um, and then this was one where the, the SMA, uh, uh, power uh, inverters were there first, and then the three Tesla power walls, I believe, were, were added to that configuration. Okay, and then from there, we'll go on to financials and incentives. Now, as we mentioned briefly earlier, uh, there is the 26% federal investment tax credit. And uh, in order for that to apply to the battery, um, it has to be um, installed in conjunction with solar, or you already have to have a solar system set up there. And, and also uh, another, another feature of the batteries is that they can only be charged by the solar themselves in order to get the full 26% federal investment tax credit. But that's how we will be wiring your system. Um, so, so that that's, that's the only thing that can really transpire. Uh, so you will be able to get that full 26% federal tax credit. Now, um, at the end of this last year, um, the, the, the federal tax credit was bumped back up from 22% uh, as they were projecting to back up to 26% for both uh, 2021 and 2022, which is fantastic. Um, now in 2023, it's gonna go ahead and drop back down to the 22%, but that gives us two solid years of, of that really nice 26% federal tax credit. And then in 2024 for residential, um, it, it, it's, it's uh, scheduled to expire and it's gonna drop down to 10% for commercial indefinitely at that point. Um, also so, uh, some of the other um, uh, business farm related incentives are um, makers and bonus depreciation. Um, makers is, mod um, is modified uh, accelerated uh, cash recovery system. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Um, and, and, and with, with the, with the the federal depreciation and also state depreciation, generally speaking, your business can, can recoup somewhere in a range of 12 to 25% of your system price. Now, what that percentage is will be completely determined by basically what your tax rate is, because that will be determine how much you, you'll give, give, get back in terms of depreciation. But the reason it's referred to as bonus depreciation is because the federal depreciation, you actually have the option to take it entirely in one year. And that was a recent switch from a six-year depreciation that the makers uh, refers to. And then also there, there's the REAP grant. It's the, it's the USDA Re Renewable Energy for America program grant. And apparently we're gonna have more on this later. <laughs> 
Okay, now when it comes to the uh, state and utility based incentives, um, in Illinois, and I, and I know that there's folks here from Missouri too, but I'll speak to Illinois first. Um, we have the Illinois um, Solar Renewable Energy Credits, and, and it's the most robust, robust uh, state incentive in, in the United States. And you can recover up to 40% of your original system cost, um, either in one lump sum or over five years, depending on the, the size of your system. Um, the smaller systems uh, that basically will produce up to about 20,000 kilowatt hours, uh, those are the ones that kind of fit into the category of where you get that really quick one, one year payback. Uh, systems larger than that would be a five year payback at a lower incentive rate. And um, here's, here's a little nice little pie chart um, in, in terms of t talking about the, uh, the overall cost of the system. I, 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 I love working with farms just because when, when you add in uh, the depreciation and, and other potential incentives like the REAP grant, that, that generally farms will be getting at least 85% of their money back in the first year and a half of the smaller system. And then if you throw in a, in a REAP grant that you're in the zone where you can actually get paid to go solar just on the incentives alone. But before you actually produce a kilowatt hour, uh, that, that the incentives will actually be greater than your upfront cost um, in, in some cases. And we, we've done deals like that before. That's, what, that's why it's so compelling in Illinois when you add that 26% federal tax credit with the depreciation and then, and then this incredible state incentive, it really kind of transforms that picture. Now, now in, in, in Ameren, Missouri, uh, they have a, a 25 cent a watt uh, utility rebate that, to the customers, and it's a direct cash rebate that's going to be available through 2023. Uh, now, to qualify, the maximum size of the array is at 25 kilowatts residential and 100 kilowatts commercial. Now, now as far as the economics uh, uh, in Missouri go for farmers, we still have the federal tax credit. We still have the, the, the depreciation, and we still have the opportunity for, for the REAP grant, the USDA Rural Energy for America program grant. And, and, and so in those cases, um, uh, farms could be facing, uh, you know, just about a net cost of in about the 20 to 25 percent range, uh, get, getting about 75 percent uh, of that, the 30 the 70 percent of that money back um, from the investment. And so we're looking at compelling cases in both cases, of course, a little a little more exciting in, in Illinois, but we also uh, do sell a lot of, of solar um, in, in battery systems in Missouri. Um, okay, from there, here's a little bit more information about, about the USDA REAP grant. Um, um, REAP, as I mentioned, stands for Renewable Energy for America program. And this, uh, uh, this provides grant funding for for-profit entities uh, to up to 25% of project cost. Um, I, I have seen um, in certain situations where you might get a lower percent, either 20 or 15%. Uh, that's kind of just up to the to your state's USDA. Um, of course, anything is, is better than nothing because it is a grant. Um, and now to be eligible, your farm or small business must either be a, an agricultural producer with at least 50% of gross income coming from agricultural operations or just a small business in an eligible community. And, and for perspective, basically you have to live in, in, in a community that's less than 50,000 people. And so if you're in Southern Illinois and you're Southeast of Belleville, your small business would qualify for the USDA REAP grant. Um, and so that, that's an easy way to kind of think about that. Um, and um, generally, the way the REAP grant works is we, we've worked with a couple of different consultants that actually would, would put this uh, uh, REAP grant together uh, uh, for you. Um, in some cases, there's a nominal cost. Um, uh, usually, there's a little bit more of a greater cost if, if, if you win, um, but that's just kind of taken out of your, your, your grant earnings. Um, but, but that's generally how, how it works that we've been having consultants write these grants for our, our clients and, and have had a lot of success with that when, when we do try it. And I think it's an incredible mechanism, especially in Missouri, uh, where, where they don't have as robust of a, of a state incentive. Okay, from there, um, Nicole, did you wanna take back over? Yeah, I can take this slide. Thank you, Brent. 
Uh, now let's just walk through the project workflow so you can, uh, you know what to expect when working with Straight Up Solar. Um, yeah, getting started is what you can do today, but just by submitting a get a quote form, which I actually just dropped in the chat. So you should be able to uh, either click it, hopefully it's live for you, or you might have to copy and paste it into the uh, URL, your window. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the info you submit is reviewed by our solar support special specialist team, and they gather all the information that's needed to start planning your system. And then it moves over to a solar project developer. Uh, who works with you to set a custom plan and they actually really collaborate with you on finding a solution that, that fits your unique needs because everybody's situation is different. Uh, once you agree on a solar setup that works best for you, you sign the contract and we move to step three, which is project guidance. Um, our project manage manager gets you the engineer design, submits the permitting, which is actually kind of nice because you don't have to do all that like paperwork. Um, and we do a tech on site at your house or your farm. Um, I did want to mention that steps one and two are actually all done virtually now. We want to be respectful of social distancing and uh, similarly our install crew has guidance on taking precautions and wearing masks and maintaining distance. Um, then in step four, we build the installation. Once it's installed, we help you schedule a time for your electric company to come out and energize your system. And they come out and they set up a bi-directional meter. And this typically happens about 30 days uh, after the array is installed. And then once you're energized, you'll be able to enjoy your new solar array. Uh, you can monitor your new array online to see production. And if you're actually like a lot of our customers, you'll find yourself checking it on sunny days, just like today, um, which is super fun. Um, and as a side note, now is actually a really good time to get into our installation queue. Um, solar is in demand right now, and so you want your system to be installed uh, so it's ready to soak up the springtime sun. Um, and this lets your panels produce energy at their maximum capacity because you're getting, you know, the sunniest part of the year. And then, oh, one more thing. If you already have a solar proposal from us, uh, you just want to get in touch with your project developer and they can uh, add a battery to it. They'll probably have some questions for you just to figure out your setup. Um, yeah, and if you have solar that wasn't installed by us, that's not a problem either. We can get you started with a battery backup either way. Uh, we have another agribusiness focus, focused webinar coming up. Um, it's called Why is Solar Good for Agriculture on March 11th. Uh, we'll talk about how solar improves your cash flow, fosters energy security by stabilizing your electricity rate, and leaves a lasting legacy. Uh, this, there's also a testimonial from an Illinois farmer that we're going to put in there. Uh, so if you want to register, go ahead and follow this link that I'm dropping in the chat now. Something cool I wanted to say on the slide too, Nicole, while you have it up. Um, I know, I believe Adam Kina was probably part of this installation in Ida, Illinois. I have actually been on this site to service it. It's one of our, uh, probably, as you can see, it's one of our most picturesque installations in front of that, uh, you know, that operation, the grain operations, grain storage facility. Um, super cool to see that. It'll be a great time. Nice. Okay, and this actually just concludes the presentation portion of the solar battery webinar for farms. We're gonna start our Q&A. So if you haven't already, go ahead and add your questions to the Q&A. Um, you can also drop them in the chat if, if you, that's more handy for you to do. Um, and if you are ready to start your battery project, um, I did share a link in the chat a couple minutes ago. Um, and if you have any specific questions, feel free to reach out to Brent. I want to say too, thank you all for all the work you do in the in the field, uh, raising the food and the, the animals um, that we all depend on to live. It's it's so important for livelihood. It's farming is one of the toughest industries to be in, and uh, this is you know talking about batteries. Just to close this topic out is um, you you're trying to control your inputs. Batteries are one of the best ways to do that is to get a very you know good price on your electricity for the next however long the system that you want it to last. So definitely reach out to us. And if you need any more technical support or questions answered, that hello at, you can ask specifically at hello at for myself, Kyle Hawkinson. Um, Adam Keen is usually in the field, so I wouldn't say he's usually available, but we have technical <laughs> available if, uh, if you have any questions about that. So thanks for your attendance tonight, folks. Thank you guys. And I'll be sending a recording of this webinar if you wanna re uh, review anything that we went over today. Um, so thank you all. Have a great, great evening. <laughs> Bye, guys.